a spreadsheet for for just one container of what we do and it's like a 57 percent return on your money uh, of course that's just for the merchandise that doesn't include you know the the building and all of that but that's that's incredible to have that so we have the, the tools to be able to have a franchisee come in and say hey i want to make uh, two hundred thousand dollars a year i want to make two million dollars a year or five million dollars a year we have the formula put in place to be able to to tell them and and show them how we can get to that to their goals and their and Frankly, I think we will probably smash their goals. All right, we're rolling, Scott and Jeff. Thanks so much for joining me, Thanks, guys. Dalton. Thanks, Dalton. Appreciate Excellent. you you having us. Yeah, no, absolutely, and super glad that we got connected. You know, through Evan, and um, really excited to have this conversation today because we're talking about iron iron bull carts and the new franchise opportunity but before we get into all of that um why don't you guys take a minute and and uh i mean i know you pretty well but uh introduce yourselves real briefly uh give us your background uh we'll start with scott and then yeah jeff go and then let's yeah, i'll actually give you uh my background and how i got into this because it's kind of a crazy story i uh, i've lived overseas so actually when i was 17 years old I, I i lived in germany that was my first experience overseas i was a short time exchange student over in Germany. And that got kind of my juices flowing. I'm like, man, I love to travel. So I wound up point in my life living in Africa, importing, exporting diamonds. I've lived in China, Dubai. So I've got a strong import export background. And uh, me and Jeff actually had another product that still doing really well. We invented these uh, silicone sports rings and we've been manufacturing these for a number of years. And one of my buddies at the gym, he kind of came up to me and he was kind of asking some questions. He was like, Hey, uh, you make your stuff like overseas? Yeah, yeah. You you mainly use China? I mean, yeah. I was like, what are you, what are you getting at? He goes, could, could you do me a favor? Could you make me a golf cart? I was like, what? A golf cart? What the heck do you need a golf cart for? He goes, well, funny story. And this is just a few years ago, Dalton. He said, uh, me and my partner, so his partner, they've been selling lawnmowers for years and years. But they started selling golf carts. And all of a sudden, they're making three to five grand a golf cart. They'd order eight, they'd sell out of them right away, but the problem is they could never get them again. So they keep calling these big companies, uh, Easy Go, Icon, Green Machine, and they'd get one order, but then they couldn't get any more. And they're like, these things sell like hotcakes, we've got great profit margins. He's like, the funny part is they don't even test drive them, they just look at them and they drive them away, they, they, they're done. He's like, if you could make us golf yeah. carts, I think we'd do really well. So it's a little more complicated than a ring. You know, people can die. It's got moving parts. On it. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. So there's some regulations. So anyways, I spent about six months uh, doing research, uh, putting this together, doing some design work. And it, funny, if, if you can make an engagement ring that a girl loves, you know, I think I can make a golf cart a, a guy will like. Okay. So my goal was to make it so appealing that, that it sells itself. Well, Long story short, and we'll get more into it in a little bit, but a quick background is uh, our first sample order was eight carts. We sold out in one hour. And so we knew that we had a winner. Yeah. That's it, it was crazy. And I'll get into more in a second. But, you know, basically my background is, you know, I've been, you know, serial entrepreneur and I've been doing manufacturing and importing and exporting for over 20 years. And, you know, I think we have a winner here. We'll get into more, more of it, but that's some of my background. Jeff, why don't you give them some of your background too? Very cool. Well, uh, I had a credit repair company and, and, uh, Scott came down. This is how we actually met. Scott came down, was, uh, looking at uh, investing in it. And I had kind of a squirrely partner and it didn't work out, but we kept in touch throughout the years. And then the silicone ring popped up and, and, uh, we just reconnected and, and there's a, the chemistry between us that, uh, would rival any any two people, I think, where we just are the synergy that we have between us. So uh, I was in the uh, automotive, uh, what do you call it? I, I pinstriped cars for 15 years. And then I got in the mortgage cool. business and I was number one wherever I, wherever I went and, and really good at, um, at, at getting those sales uh, with the mortgage business. And so when Scott came to me, I had a plethora of knowledge and experience in different things. And uh, 
so, you know, we just work really super well together, hand in hand. And that's, that's a little bit about yeah, me. No. And Journey Jet is because I sing and I sing Journey. So. And he's actually amazing. <laughs> I, I probably get this wrong, so you have to correct me, Jeff, but I believe his album was nominated for a, a Grammy at one point. Is that right, Jeff? It was on the 60th annual Grammy Awards. Uh, yeah, what? That's a true story. <laughs> yeah. However, yes. you know, I didn't make the top five. Oh. So, you know, you you won't find it. But the fact that it was on the ballot was pretty, uh, it was pretty special. That's insane. What uh, what music do you sing? You said you cover Journey or what music do you sing? Well, I, I, I do karaoke and I sing pretty much anything. I don't rap. <laughs> <laughs> And I and I don't I, I don't like do grunge scream screamo, <laughs> but but you know I I I like to sing what people like to listen yeah, he, to. So I I we'll have to take you sometime, yeah. Dalton. He kills it. One of the first times I I went out with him, we're at a random karaoke bar in Iowa. And, you know, Jeff's a good looking guy, and you know he's you know average height, pretty strong. But you know he walks in the room. It's like, oh, there, there's Jeff, no big deal. And he starts singing and, oh, my gosh, and drinks around the house. And everyone's <laughs> his best friend, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. Well, that's that's great. And I love the the origin behind um, Iron Bull. And so one cool thing that um, – and how we – and how all three of us met was the franchise opportunity. So, tell yeah, and kind of give us um, the background on, like, why – you know, why franchising? Because here's the thing about franchising that I've always found fascinating. It's just a, it's another way to like invest, but it's very like underrated and not very known, right? If you think of investing, you think, you know, the big one now is real estate. Uh, you might go to the stock market um, or, or a number of other things, but like buying a business or a franchise has never been like a really popular way of doing that um, until, you know, recently. And so I think it's great, but what got got you guys interested in franchising and and Iron Bull specifically because the golf cart is kind of a new idea with it in general. Dalton, I love your concept. So before I started importing and exporting, I actually worked in the stock market with American Express, UBS, MetLife, had my own firm, and and what and I was really lucky and blessed. I was an adjunct professor at Virginia Tech for financial planning just for a couple of years. And what you're saying is is unique because you get it. You know, when you invest in the stock market, you're investing in a company. And when you're doing a franchise, right. you're investing in yourself as a company. And so I, I love your concept. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never thought of it that way, but it, it makes perfect sense. And I, I, I made some notes. So what was interesting when we first started uh, our golf carts, um, we actually got approached by quite a few dealers saying we want to be a dealer. And so we, we set up some dealers, but I, I, I made some notes. I think there's about four reasons why I don't think the dealer model works well in this environment today. And uh, first of all, is what my 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 friends and, and you know, they've decided to stay in their own kind of model with their own franchise, basically, because you can make three to five grand a unit. But their biggest issue and what I've heard from all these other dealers is as a dealer, you have no guarantee towards inventory. So it's once you order, you order. And then the next time you say, hey, I sold them all. I want more. Well, sorry, because what happens is and there's some of these golf cart companies. I won't name any names, but they brag about we have a thousand dealers. Well, that stinks, yeah. because what if I just want to order you know, 20 carts a month? That's not going to happen. So there's no guarantee mm -hmm. on inventory. There's no planning. Number two, there's very little, if any, marketing support. They basically sell the cart to you and you figure it out on your own, whether you're advertising on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. Radio ads, billboards, good luck, figure it out. Number three, there's absolutely no system for success. And, and quite frankly, it's not built that way. It, it, it's okay. I'm not being negative, but there's no system for success. They might have a few tips, but there's no cookie cutter. Here's what you do. Here's our market. Here's how you, you know, close the deal. Here's how you service the deal. Here's how you upgrade it. There's no system. And lastly, yeah. it's a transactional relationship versus an actual relationship. So, you know, I saw that model, we've played around with it, and I'll give you a, a proof of it. Yesterday, Jeff talked to one of our dealers in, in Minnesota and said, hey, we've decided to do a franchise model. And he's been a dealer and he loves Iron Bull. But he says, I don't care what it costs, I'm in. Because he yeah. realizes yeah. as a franchisee, it's a win-win. So 
you know, why franchises? You know, after we started talking, I started doing some research. I was shocked that 95% of franchises have a, a, a positive result. So 95% of franchises are successful. Yeah. Where in a normal business, what is it, one in 10, you know, over three years? I mean, it's it's very difficult. And over five years, it's one out of a, a, a hundred. You know, it's difficult. Um, that, right. No, totally. that royalty, I used to think, was a little bit of a downside. when You know, I looked at doing franchises when I was younger and, you know, entrepreneurial, but didn't have an idea. I love uh-huh. the royalty now because I know that Iron Bull wants to help you sell so we can make a royalty, too. So it's a win-win. Every time we sell a product, <laughs> everybody wins. Um, we, we've built a system for success and we're continuing to build it from, you know, A to Z, you're going to know what to do to be successful, how to market, how to talk to your clients, how to service a vehicle, how to upgrade a vehicle. Uh, kind of what's big for us is, uh, marketing. So we have an in-house marketing team that's second to none. I mean, I'll have Jeff, why don't you talk about the marketing just a little bit since you kind of had that up? Well, they, um, uh, this our our director of marketing you know he was responsible and um really impacting on purple mattress going from pretty much zero to a billion dollars yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. and so we're you know the fact that and 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 the great part about it is is for us as a as a dealer as if we stayed with the dealer model nobody could have access to that because you just you know, he's just too busy so we've got that at our at our disposal so yeah and it's crazy 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 yeah the amount of and we haven't even shot a video yet so <laughs> once we shoot the video for for our, our marketing video it's it, it will be viral we believe iron bull will be a household name within 12 months to 18 months yeah no kidding and i was i mean for you know, my audience, they know I've been with Dirty Dough for a little bit. Iron Bull is just another one of those uh, opportunities that you just really like, once you hear the idea, you really can't pass it up because it's such a good model. And when you think about it, um, I've been in the automotive industry. I was in the automotive industry for like seven or eight years. And there's just so many things that you can do to make money in an in a dealership kind of setting. And so when you franchise that, it's just an amazing opportunity. There's a lot of different revenue sources that can become available. And, you know, while we can't make any kind of revenue claim, um, I love the fact that there, the potential and the, you know, opportunity is endless with, with something like this. And it's yep. just really fun. To be I'm glad you brought that up. One thing I... Yeah, one thing I'd like to add is is uh, I just finished the spreadsheet for for just one container of what we do, and it's like a fifty seven percent return on your money. Uh, of course, that's just for the merchandise. That doesn't include you know the the building and all of that. But that's that's incredible to have that. So we have the the tools to be able to have a franchisee come in and say, Hey, I want to make a $200,000 a year. I want to make $2 million a year or $5 million a year. We have the formula put in place to be able to, to tell them and, and show them how we can get to that, to their goals and their, and frankly, I think we will probably smash their goals. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Dalton, you, know, you mentioned something, you know, it's, it's important that the, the franchise makes money. So, you know, I won't, won't name a name, but there's a uh, golf cart UTV manufacturer out there. And one of our buddies is a dealer and their pitch to them is, well, you're going to buy the cart for eighty nine ninety nine. You're going to sell for $8,500. So, well, time out. I'm going to lose $400. Well, you don't understand. You're going to lose 400, but you're going to make money. I mean, I'm not as good as math as Jeff. You got a perfect on the math test. I didn't get a perfect. I played basketball, but I know if I lose four hundred dollars, I lose four hundred dollars. So yeah. we yeah. built our map model. We want you to make between two thousand and maybe seven or eight thousand, depending on some of the products and some of the ancillary products you can bring in. It it's substantial. Yeah, yeah. I no, and and again, it's just one of those things that people get the opportunity to invest in something that. Uh, has the potential of being cash flowing and has the potential of just be, and, and then being something that you can control. That's what I think is my favorite part about franchising and, and being in a business as a way of like investing is like, look, if, if I invest in Apple or I invest in 
Costco, I have no control over what Costco does or have, or anything like that. Like if I have a mutual fund, those companies, I have nothing to do with them. Uh, but if I, you know, put my, put all that money and I put it into my own business, my own franchise, like I have a lot of control over how that does. You know, I can put extra dollars into marketing. I can put extra dollars into campaigns and, and, or whatever, right. Or making the product better. And, and that's the cool thing about franchises as well is like, you know, you have direct access to the people who make the playbook. Right. And so yeah. you can be like, Hey, I think we should make this change. And if you get a good franchise or right, they're going to be like, yeah, absolutely. Like, let's figure out how to get that done. And it's a partnership. Exactly. Right. But at the end of the day, you just have a lot of control over how your money is going to, is going to work and, and, and just having fun too. Like you're selling yeah. golf carts, man. That's awesome. Well, and, and they're sexy golf carts. <laughs> well, that, that leads me to the wonderful <laughs> point that something I think we nailed it. It's great. I, so I think we have like unbelievable curb appeal is what I call it. I, I think we nailed our design mm -hmm. and you really never know it till it's out there, but I, I could tell a million stories, but we mm -hmm. actually have a dealer that bought eight carts and he called me up that next day and said, Oh my gosh, you won't believe what happened. And first of all, I thought, oh, is there a problem? You know, did something blow and grow right? He goes, no, 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 no. As we're unloading eight carts, we sold four of them. <laughs> I said, are you kidding me? They said, people saw it. They pulled over. They said, this looks great. In fact, Jeff had a, so I, on the back of it, I made this license plate and it's our phone number too. It's 855 Iron Bowl, something I can remember, you know? <laughs> so we, we put this vanity plate on there. It's, it's our, it's our toll-free number. And, you know, I thought like maybe down the road, five years from now, someone sees it and that's a cool cart and they call it up. It's, it's blown up. In fact, there's a gentleman that uh, is looking at being a fran one of our first franchisees. Uh, tell the story uh, about that attorney, uh, Chad, down in uh, Florida. Oh yeah. He was, it was so funny because, because uh, our, our marketing team had just started a uh, campaign and, um, his, uh, our, our attorney down in Florida, he's driving down the road. He sees an iron bowl cart on the back of a truck or trailer. And he thought it was the coolest thing. And, and I, he must've said the word or something because later that night he got, um, he got an ad right in front of him. And now all he sees is iron bowl ads. <laughs> that's awesome though. That, I mean, that's, and that's, uh, just the beauty, the beauty of it. But yeah, I mean, when you have something good like that, uh, it, it's great. And, you know, you just can't really get any, you know, any better. And that's why I love the the franchising world. But yeah, talk, talk to us about maybe kind of the process, because this is something new for all of us. But, but what is it like? You know, how do we uh, foresee maybe what the day to day is like? Well, I'll tell you, first of all, it's a fun business. And that's what excites me. Jeff and I, We've yeah. delivered some carts. We've gone on the road with some carts a little bit. It's, it's kind of fun. We're down in uh, Charlotte, North Carolina, and we pulled it up to the hotel we're at. And this lady, and I've got a video, I can send it to you, can post it. But she ran out and says, I've never seen a <laughs> cart like this. This is beautiful. I love All of a sudden, you're everybody's best friend. It, it, it's crazy. So then, you know, we drove it to Chipotle because, you know, we're a street legal vehicle, which we'll get into, but we actually can drive these on the majority of the streets. We've got a title for it. We've got a VIN number, WMI code. But we're leaving Chipotle, and this lady pulls up, rolls down her window. Hey, guys. And I don't know what she wants. We're like, hi. She's like, where'd you get that golf cart? We're like, we actually make them. Are you kidding me? My church needs one. Next thing you know, we're exchanging numbers. She thinks it's the coolest thing. So, you know, the day-to-day, the -day, it's actually really fun. You know, you want to post some ads on Facebook. And, and with our marketing team, we'll be posting ads for you. But basically, you're going to take some phone calls. People are going to come in. They're going to look at the cart. They're going to drive the cart. And, you know, nine times out of ten, they want to take it home right away. And which leads us into um, an ancillary product that we've created. So we, we do have financing with the largest uh, retail lender in the U.S. It's Roadrunner. It's through the Octane Lending Platform. And when I talked to them last, they mm -hmm. right now have over a billion dollars outstanding loans, which is amazing. And they've got great rates. So go down to Tier 4. So I think anything above a 5 60 yeah. credit score they'll get approved but they realize that there's people like me out there see i'm that smart guy I'd go in i'd buy a golf cart and then i'd say well how do i get home <laughs> oh no <laughs> so, right, so we've right, actually right. designed a very cool trailer and roadrunner has made it so if you're approved for a golf cart or a utv you're approved for a trailer right away too yeah automatically it's insane yeah 
That's so crazy. So the franchisee can deliver the trailer and the golf cart together if the franchise or if the customer doesn't have a truck or a way to tow the trailer, they can drive it over there, drop it off, and come back empty. <laughs> that's pretty. <cool. laughs> well, that's cool too because um, what what else is really fun about getting into a business specifically a franchise and let's talk about this is uh the product so i've done this podcast for like over three years and one thing that keeps coming up is the opposite of what i learned in my mba which is like make sure that like if you have a a stellar product like everything becomes easier yeah. right and that is the kind of the key so when you go into a franchise you you don't have to worry about product development for the most part you don't have to worry about is this going to work or whatever like Iron Bull carts, for example, stellar golf cart. Like you, I mean, you just go in there, you're like, whew, you've taken like a hundred percent of the work off your plate. Uh, and then, and then you just have, I mean, then you have this killer model or, or, you know, along with the approvals and stuff. And I think that's probably one of the coolest things. Take us through like the evolution of how, how we got to the golf cart that we're selling today. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I want to do when I wanted to build a new golf cart is I kind of want to look what was out there and, it, 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 it kind of say it tongue in cheek, but I didn't want to make your grandfather's golf cart. You know, everyone's a lot seen Caddyshack and they've seen these boring golf carts. Yeah. You know, so you go to the golf course, we've all driven them. You know, you push on the accelerators, a long delay, it barely goes up the hill. You know, it's not very responsive. This is crazy, Dalton. One of the first things I noticed, you know, I, you know I've got my cell phone, it's right here. And it's like, where's the uh -huh. cell phone charger? <laughs> they, they didn't have a cell phone charger. And then, Where's the radio? Where's the Bluetooth speaker? Like, you know, I want to have fun on here. So mm -hmm. we kind of started from scratch. Um, I'm also, you know, you're a big guy too. You know, I'm a big guy. We're big guys. These golf carts are tiny. I'm like, you know, me and you in the front seat, we're going to be like this. You know? <laughs> Plus it might tip, tip on us, you know, we're too big. So, you know, we wanted okay, to build right. kind of like, like the golf cart went in the weight room and got buff, you know, like got jacked. So we wanted to build yeah. kind of a, a jacked golf cart and, you know, pardon my language, but the number one adjective we get on our golf cart is that's badass. We hear it all the time. That's number one. So all the time. Yeah. Un unintentionally. No problem. Yeah. By their mouth. <laughs> unintentionally, we made a bad ass golf cart. So we, we put bigger <laughs> rims on it, bigger tires. We have it lifted. We have uh, Bluetooth speakers. We've got, you know, a, a 10 inch touchscreen right now. Um, you know, I, one thing I didn't like is they had like a, what's called a three kilowatt motor. And so we brought out a five kilowatt motor, you know, I wanted to be able to go up the hills. And then um, a lot of gas golf carts are kind of dying. We can still get those. And there's a real push for electric, which, you know, I'm for both, to be honest with you. So um, yeah. the lead acid battery performs well, but um, lithium, big issue, and this is an article I sent you and you can post it. The, the biggest issue with lithium is it's, it's really expensive. And it's, it's a tricky technology. Mm -hmm. So what we did to be on the forefront is we actually created our own lithium technology. And this is proprietary strictly to Iron Bull. In fact, we have dealers call us, say, we love your carts. Mm -hmm. we, we'd like to sell them, but can we sell your batteries too? I, I, we didn't even think about this model, model Dalton. It just kind of evolved. So we created this lithium battery pack that is unbelievable. I mean, when you drive the lithium, you'll never go back. It's instant power. As soon as you touch... <laughs> I guess it's the power pedal now, not the gas pedal. As soon as you touch <laughs> the power pedal, it takes off. We had to tune it down a little bit. It's quiet. It sounds like like basically a, a, a Tesla. But to back up to a little bit to our Model 2, one thing that we wanted to do too is we really want to push these grand openings. And so, you know, once people are in, we actually want to get some pre-sales coming in. Most of our golf carts, we've never truly been able to keep an inventory, even as a as a as a brand to our distributors or to our dealers. We would typically get a phone call. Jeff, t tell them what the phone call normally is like as dealers would call. How many golf carts? Well, um, yeah. How many how many carts you want? Well, I, I saw your cart. It it looks as scott said badass and and uh i think we we could sell 20 or 30 a month and so we'd like to order 50. and and i have to come back to them and tell them well you, okay i can sell you eight and you know yeah. this it's because the demand is so high compared to what our inventory is so we've gone out and as a franchisee you'll be able to have the inventory that you need um if you're in a 
you know, high volume market and you need 50, 60, 100 carts a month, we'll be able to, to accomplish that. Yeah, I I remember being in the car business kind of towards the end of COVID and just, I mean, even before COVID, it was really hard. And here was the other thing too. It, it was very like boys clubby. Mm-hmm. So like if one dealer did, you know, had better, you know, clout with the, with the manufacturer, like Honda or Benz or something, they would get more cars. Oh. And if, and if you didn't, you know, they wouldn't give you more cars. And it's like, dude, how are we going to do this? But this is cool because you know, I just order what I need and I get it. And I, you know, and, and there's no like favorites. Like if you order it, you know, uh, which is something that I know dealers struggle with right now. Like I know they hit the nail on the head. You hit the nail on the head, Dalton. I don't want to tell which one, but we went to a Yamaha dealer, uh, actually distributor. They have 25 distributors in the U S we found out. And you know, they do, uh, they're two years behind on the, their course carts and their contract is exclusive. You can only buy Yamaha, which I, I understand. But um, outside the course carts, they said, you know, they want to do between 250 and 400 carts a year. And they were told their allocation is 40. So it's like, yeah, that's you've money. got this business, you have all these employees you're trying to take care of and they're kids and you, you know, you're responsible for them. It's a family and you can't get the inventory. Yeah. yeah that's that's wild. wild. And so th- there's a couple of reasons why Iron Bull has been successful. One it's, it truly is an inverted supply demand curve. And I sent you an article and I'm going to just go through a little bit real quick. And this is very exciting for anybody in the golf cart business. Anybody. Doesn't matter if you're Yamaha, Iron Bull, easy go. But right now, uh, the biggest trend is they're, they're making them low speed vehicles, LSV. So you can drive them in your neighborhood. So right now, the low speed vehicle market is at about, for this year, it's going to be $10.4 billion. Okay. So a lot of golf carts. Yeah. It's expected to grow a billion a year for the next five years. And that's right insane. now, Yamaha, the largest, they can't handle the demand. We're going to grow by a billion dollars a year, which is a lot of carts. So there's an opportunity for anybody in the golf cart industry. Yeah. Now, why is Iron Bowl? Yeah, and well? I think that's that's the coolest part. Yeah. I mean, you could literally sell any golf cart and, and, and do well. The reason we do well is that it looks awesome, it performs better, and there's a huge market for it. Yeah, there's a huge – well, I mean, I'm just thinking about my yeah. neighborhood, right? Like, uh, we live in a pretty tight neighborhood, and, and even a small town. Like, I'm from a small town, right? Um, I, I don't know. You just it, – it's always – I know this sounds crazy, first world problems, right? Knock on wood. But it's crazy because, uh, like, sometimes you don't want to hop in the car. Like, sometimes that's just a – you know, it's just crazy. It's If you can hop in something quick – uh, you don't have to use a bunch yeah. of gas. Like I was telling my wife, like we got to get a golf cart just to drop kids off at school and get groceries, man. Because well, like it just that'd be there's cool. A lot of, there's a lot of <laughs> golf cart communities. In fact, there was down in one in Florida. They've got a golf cart lane. Yeah. Uh, there was one in Arizona. I was at. They actually have. A, you're dead on, Dalton. They have a school drop off for the golf carts. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's, that's cool. cool. Then there's always Peachtree City in Georgia, and yep. there's like. I don't know, 30,000 homes and it's all golf cart paths. Wow. You can't, you can't drive. Yeah. You can't drive through the neighborhood on a regular road without seeing a golf cart either on the sidewalk or on one of the paths. Well, the villages in Florida is an exclusive, it's a golf cart community. You have to drive it. And and you're right, Dalton. It's a lot quicker. It's a lot cooler. I mean, the golf cart, you turn in the key, you hit forward or reverse and you're off. You know, and everybody hops in and please wear your seatbelts, guys, you know, but we, I don't, <laughs> you're supposed to, but it's just a lot, it's a lot more convenient and it's a lot more, it, it truly is cool, especially like in the nice weather like we're having right now. And ironically, we're doing this Memorial Day weekend, which is kind of like the big kickoff for camping and fishing and golf carting and boating. And, yeah. but this, yeah. this market is, is, it's crazy. So I've never you know, I've been involved in a lot of products. We've had a lot of, I've had a lot of hot products for companies I've worked for, companies I've, products I've created. Dalton, I, I've never truly had a product I didn't have to use quote unquote sell skills. I mean, it's, I, I'll never forget the first time mm-hmm. I saw a guy walk up to one of our carts and I, I felt good. It's like your baby, you know, you make it, he walked up, yeah. he literally pretty much kicked the tires and said, I'll take it. And I, 
I looked at him. I said, you don't want to drive it? He goes, no, it looks good. It's like, yeah. <laughs> there was a guy yesterday at like, the, the post. He posted his cart. And, you know, he must be a young guy. And he was like, he, he had this list. And I'll have to send it to you. It's funny. But it was like lake house, yeah. sports car, all this stuff. And then he said, golf cart. My life's complete. <laughs> no, but it's so cool, though, isn't it? Like, that. it's just, yeah. It just makes sense. And then, and then the kind of the possibilities are, are endless when you, when you know you have a good product and, and like you mentioned the sales thing, cause it, it, it's just fun to be part of something like that, where it's just like, you don't, there's no hard closing or anything like that. You've got to talk with people. You got to be cool with people, but, but past that, it's like, yeah, just, yeah. Give me the golf cart, make it super easy for me to get this. And then we're in, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like another uh, big trend I'm seeing, I think it's wonderful is these campgrounds. Like, Everybody at these campgrounds, they want a golf cart. And then it seems like everyone's trying to either keep up with the Joneses or beat the Joneses. And that's why people want our carts is they look at them and say, I've never seen anything like it. I, I want it. And it, inevitably it always happens. You know, one person in the yeah. campground gets it, then the other one comes in and then they're all getting them. And, but, you know, everybody wants to have kind of what's cool. And, and it's a, it's a family thing. You know, the kids like to ride it. Grandparents can drive it with their grandkids in there. We've got some baskets up front. That where you can something innovative that we've designed baskets up front to put stuff. We've got a cooler in the back. We're working on a luggage rack up top. That way it's more of a family wow. vehicle too. Very cool. No, I love that so much. Uh, no, that's, that's freaking awesome. And then here's the best part. Uh, we're franchising it. Um, it's a, you know, we're all, we're almost there. I think by the time this recording goes out, we'll probably be there, but if not, uh, we're, we're, we're pretty damn close. And so, you know, everybody can not only have a piece of the action and get a cart, but they can have a piece of the action and like, you know, sell the carts and, and own this business as part of, you know, their investment portfolio, right? Because it is something that you can do, uh, as a semi absentee, if you have a really good GM, if you have somebody on your team, who's a good operator, uh, and then, you know, and just keep going from there. So, so it's really, so it's really fun. And I really appreciate you guys coming on. Uh, where can everybody find iron bull though? I know I'm on the, on the team. They can reach out to me, but, but how do they follow you guys? Get a hold of you guys if they want to talk to you. Go ahead, Jeff. Well, they can, uh, they can go right to iron bull Um, and if you've heard this on Dalton's podcast, iron bull franchise.com backslash or forward slash Dalton. And, um, you know, it's it's an exciting uh, time. You can also call us at 855-IRON-BULL um, if you'd like to, or uh, our regular uh, website is ironbullcarts.com. You know, and what's, the, cool. what's exciting, Dalton, this is what a, about you, a Scott? fun business. But this is a business where you can actually make however much you want to make and, and set your own hours. And we, I mean, we literally have a, a dealership. I won't tell you where, but they've got five dealers, and they do over $100 million a year. And then we've got little guys that are making a couple hundred grand and happy. So, you know, the range is, it's really up to you what you want to make. The other quick, unique thing, Dalton, um, Jeff's got a, a dealer that's in a very small town in Minnesota. I don't remember the population. And they have three golf cart dealerships. You couldn't have three subways or three cookie companies in this little town, but they have three golf cart dealerships that have are thriving and surviving. So it's a unique uh, franchise where it works in a very small community all the way up to, you know, large, large cities. Oh, and it, also, uh, Dalton, yeah. if you want to yeah. reach us yeah, like that's... direct, you can uh, email us at our first names at ironbullfranchise.com. So that'd be Jeff at ironbullfranchise.com, Scott yeah. and Dalton, all three. Yeah. No, that's so cool, man. I really appreciate you guys coming on. I'm excited for all of this. So yeah, thank you. And, and thank you for uh, everything that we got going on. I'm really excited. Thanks for having us, Dalton.